What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron, this is Aaron's Aquatics, and today we will be going over the plumbing on the 90 gallon clown harem cube anemone tank, the Borg. This apocalypse before you is the remnants of a weekend of cutting PVC, gluing PVC, priming, cementing PVC, I guess that's kind of the same thing, dealing with leaks on the 90 gallon clown carom cube. So many leaks, we'll talk about that. The hugest leaks, the biggest leaks, the best leaks. Um, Mochi was here all throughout. Mochi, don't go back to bed. You are on camera. Hey, 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 I'm gonna tickle you. I got you, come on. Hello. As the third part of this build, we will be going over the plumbing on the 90 gallon tank. This is a 36 by 24 by 24 cube. Not necessarily a perfect cube, but guys, it gets the job done. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going over the sump plumbing, which you can kind of see right here. We're gonna be going over the external overflow box with all of my bells and whistles. We're gonna be talking about how this setup is supposed to work, why I decided to go this direction, and what we're gonna do from here. Now, if you have not seen the first or the second part where we talked about the tank, we leak tested the tank, um, and generally talked about what this tank is gonna be set up for, please go check out the uh, little thing up there and you will see a playlist for the entire series. Anyways, let's jump right into this. To demonstrate how this plumbing works, I wanna start with how the water will flow from the tank to the overflow box, down into the sump, through the baffles, and back up into the tank. I'm gonna keep it as natural as possible. Um, we've got my rubber ducky who's been uh, defending my tank, making sure that nothing breaks, cracks, leaks. He's done an okay job. If you guys have a name for this duck, please let me know in the comments below because he's red, he's weird, he kind of floats, but not very well. Anyways, enough, <laughs> enough of that, sorry, leak test pipe. Ignore, ignore. Okay, so the way that this will work, water will fill up, as you know, very basic 101, promise it'll get better. It comes through the lips of my eShops Eclipse large overflow box. It will come into the back of my uh, bean animal overflow, okay? The way that this works is you have water that comes out of these two pipes right here. You then have uh, a primary full siphon, Durso. Uh, you also have a uh, partial, well, it's partial siphon, um, secondary dra uh, drain line, and an emergency. The emergency I have on here is probably about an inch or so from the uh, top of the box. Hopefully we never get to that point, but I will be simulating uh, a, uh, a clog or a power outage with this build just to make sure we don't have any problems. Once the water reaches the primary and secondary drain, we will start seeing the water to going down both the, uh, the, the last and the middle pipe. Now all of these have uh, unions because if you guys have ever worked on plumbing, doing it after you have already glued or hard plumbed your system is a giant pain in the butt. So add unions wherever you can. I chose to put them right below my overflow box. So as the water comes down, 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 it hits a 90, which goes right into our sump. Let's go take a look. All right, we're in the sump. First, I apologize for the lighting. I don't have an LED strip set up in here yet like I do on the uh, 250, but let's go ahead and walk through the process. So right here, this is my primary drain, this is my secondary drain, and this is my emergency drain. We're gonna start over here. Most of the water is gonna be coming down through this primary drain, and then some of it will come down the secondary drain. This one should be a full siphon, so we shouldn't have any air whatsoever in this system. So as the water comes down the primary and secondary drain, they are both throttled by two ball valves that I currently have closed at about 25%. As the water comes down through the system, it will eventually hit two of my filter socks. Now with this build, I decided to go with filter socks. My 250, I'm going for a Triton build, and because of that, I don't have any filter socks on that system. What we're gonna have inside here is going to be my skimmer chamber, which uh, we'll be going over this later, but I've got the uh, Nios Quantum 160. This thing is rated for 250 gallons on a 90 gallon plus a, uh, I don't know, a 20 gallon sump. So it's definitely over twice the rated value for skimmer, which is excellent. So as the water comes in here, it will slowly raise up the water level in the system and then go over this first baffle. As we get into this first baffle, sorry, you can see my cross legs. <laughs> Um, as it gets to the first baffle, this is where our refugium is gonna go. I'm definitely planning on feeding heavy in this tank because we're gonna have a lot of clownfish. Um, what I'm gonna be doing eventually is hanging a Kessel 
H380 right here against the ceiling and that's going to provide a ton of light. Now what I might I'm, what I might do is try to bring it as low as possible so we can block off any kind of uh, light that's coming into the skimmer as well as the return chamber. We don't want any of that algae. Um, okay, so as the water gets higher and higher, it will eventually go through these teeth that will prevent the uh, chato or any other macroalgae from entering in the system, hit a uh, bubble trap, and then we have room for a secondary bubble trap if we wanna add it or any kind of like maybe filter media. Um, we, it then passes through, goes underneath, and then we have our return skimmer chamber, which is a uh, return skimmer. The return chamber, um, which has my Vectra M1 uh, return pump, which is an absolutely fantastic pump. I have it on the 250, works great. That then connects directly to the return line. So this is where we're back at the plumbing guy. Oh my God. We're good? <laughs> my python fell and it spooked me seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm heavily spooked right now. Okay, so back, back to the thing. So water will come back through here and it hits a T. Okay, there's a few reasons for this T. First, the way that the head pressure will work, water will first come up through here and then go back up into the tank from this direction. Any kind of head pressure generated here will come back and go down the manifold, okay? And this is where I have a, uh, um, a single reactor outlet, which I will probably be installing either carbon or GFO or maybe a GFO slash carbon mix. There's a couple out there that you can do, but um, right here, I've got my uh, Aquamax reactor, which you could put a whole bunch of different stuff. God, the lighting is terrible, um, but it works great. We're gonna go ahead and do that in the future, not right off the bat. So then as you follow, along the uh, manifold, you then have a return that goes up to a second export into the re back returning into the tank. So let's get out, take a look, see where these little things are going, and let's move on. Okay, so we're back at the back of the tank. This is the first return line that was directly above the return pump. What's gonna happen, water will come up here, it'll hit a gate valve, then it will hit a check valve, which is pointed in this direction, flow will go this way, it will then come up, hit a 90, and then go back out into the tank in the form of lock line with a, uh, I don't know what they call these, wedge returns. Um, I, this actually isn't, uh, isn't in place. See, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just kind of stuck in there just a little bit. I, I'm really hesitant to actually uh, to, to hard plumb this in. For, for those of you that have a system like this, do you ever actually hard plumb? right here or do you just kind of leave it? I mean, I tested it yesterday. This tank was filled up yesterday. Um, and you know, it didn't pop out, but I was only running my return pump at 30%. So maybe that had something to do with it. Anyways, so let's get back to this line because there's at least one thing I want to talk about. Right here is a gate valve. What this gate valve will allow me to do is adjust how much water will go through this line. And then because of that, any flow that's restricted here will get output through the second return line, which is where uh, the unnamed rubber ducky is currently sitting. So I'm gonna go back to the sump, show you guys what I'm talking about. So again, return pump comes back up to this T, goes straight back up to that first return line. Any head pressure is pushed this way and then goes back out that second line. So basically by restricting flow the, right about there where the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the gate valve is, I will redirect all the pressure back along this side of the tank. Excuse me. And we will hit the second return, which also has a check valve um, pointed in the correct direction, but this does not have an actual uh, gate valve tied to it. Or excuse me, ball valve. I keep getting those two confused. Now that you guys have seen the engine of this 90 gallon tank, I wanted to take a little time to talk about some of the challenges and difficulties I faced while setting this up over the last weekend. For those of you that already follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen the issues that I faced. Um, a couple of you gave some decent feedback, especially in Discord, but uh, if you guys are interested, hit me up here. Uh, shameless plugs, come on, come on, get on Instagram. Get on Discord, come on. I wanna to talk to you people. I wanna show you cool pictures of fish and, why am I doing this? Sorry, I have a lot of pent up energy. I just got off work. Anyways, to go over the issues that I experienced, most of them had to do with my bulkheads. Now that's usually where issues happen on builds like this, but let me go ahead and explain. So first, we had two leaks on the uh, two out of the three bulkheads 
on the overflow box, the closest and the middle one. Essentially what was happening is the gasket was damaged. I went to my local fish store, replaced them in the store. Big shout out to uh, FJW Aquarium and Dennis over there. Guys, they're freaking awesome. I brought my entire, I brought the entire overflow box with me and I'm like, hey guys, I want to fix this, but I also want to test, leak test it while I'm here. You know, can, can, can I, like, do you have some water? And I say, like, do you have some water as the entire place is covered with aquariums, but of course, I don't want to use their tank water. That's kind of inappropriate and rude. Don't ask that. So he's like, yeah, there's a bathroom in the back. So I just went to the bathroom, poured some water in, dealt with it right then and there. Perfect. Fixed. Later on, though, this bulkhead started to leak. And this is one that when I put it on Instagram, I didn't really realize until later that it actually looked like there was a big old crack through the tank. And you know, I was thinking to myself, like these have all been hand tightened and a tiny quarter turn with a wrench. So there was no way that I was gonna crack, you know, glass like this doing that with the, uh, 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 with the bulkhead. So I didn't think that that was a problem. But anyways, the issue here uh, was that it wasn't tight enough. I had just hand tightened this with a little, uh, with a little tightening, with a wrench, we're good as new. You know, some of you might be asking, Aaron, why didn't you show us how you did cement and primer on PVC? We love watching people put chemicals on plastic and watching them fuse together. Well, guess what, guys? That's really boring, okay? And it's really frustrating to record. So guess what? I didn't do it. Fight me on this. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to see this, um, I have a video. See that tank over there? Yeah, there's an entire build series of it, so go watch it. I'll put it up in the description somewhere. Well, down in the description, up on the screen. Um, I did the whole PVC in front of the camera, so yeah, that's what you can do. Anyways, moving on, I wanted to actually talk about this. I decided to use clear primer this time instead of going with the purple primer. And there's a huge reason. Purple against PVC looks like crap. Okay, this is white PVC. Imagine if purple was on it. It looks terrible. Red PVC, again, looks terrible. Next time, always use clear primer. It's a little bit harder to see, but you know, it's whatever. Now, I gotta tell you, I took this out because this thing's a piece of crap. This is the swab, the swabby, I don't know what you would call it. It was for the cement, you dip it in, then you use this to, you know, rotate on the, on, on, the, on the PVC to get it coated. These things are cheap. This thing literally popped off of the cap. So usually, okay, let me show you. Usually, it looks like this, right? Got the swabby, it's nice and damp and, you know, it, it does its job on the inside. The thing is, oh God, that smell. It bends, okay? These things bend so easily and they just pop, it just snapped right off with little to no effort of my own. Um, I don't know what happened with Oatly, or is that how you pronounce it, Oatly? But I've used these in the past. I've never had this problem. I think they may have changed whatever manufacturer they use. Maybe they went with like a Chinese brand, who knows? But in any case, uh, it, lower quality. But uh, in any case, did the job, worked, no leaks from the actual uh, plumbing itself outside of the bulkheads. All right guys, that's it for the plumbing on the 90 gallon tank. The next step of this build is going to be the aquascape. I'm super excited. This is my favorite part of any tank. Literally my favorite part of any tank. What we're gonna be doing in the next episode is, let's take a quick look, is this. I decided to go with BRS or Bulk Reef Supply Reef Saver Rock for this round so I don't really have to cure it for three months. I've diagrammed out the tank so over the next week, and I'm probably going to live stream it so if you guys are interested, subscribe to the channel. Live streaming some of my design concepts and eventually of course I'm going to record a video so that you can watch it. Um, those boxes right there are full to the brim of different types of rocks, so I have different options. Super excited to check that out. But anyways, this is going to be the next step. We're going to do this. We're going to make sure that we can fill up the tank so I can mess with some of the uh, plumbing issues that I currently have. Uh, just some bean animal overflow stuff. Alright guys, that's it for this video. For those of you saltwater freaks, you coral addicts, I got a little something I want you to check out. I've been working on my 20 gallon freshwater Iwagumi build. I'm super excited about this. I'm having a lot of fun getting back into the freshwater Taiwan shrimp side of the hobby. So if you're interested, check out the video. Um, I'm still working on the hardscape and a whole lot of other stuff, but I'm pretty excited how things are coming. Anyways, my name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. See you guys next time.